the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. John the Baptist proclaimed, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Let us turn to the Lord in penitence and faith, and humbly confess our sin. Lord Jesus, you stand among us and we do not recognise you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we are not worthy to untie the thong of your sandals. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his, his people, people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we be praise and thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant St. John the Baptist was wonderfully born, and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Saviour, by the preaching of repentance. Lead us so to repent according to his preaching, and after his example, constantly to speak the truth, boldly to rebuke vice, and patiently to suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning from verse 1. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her time, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. 
the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 85, and the response is, Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. Show, Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostle, beginning from the 14th verse of the 13th chapter. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, give it. So Paul stood up and with a gesture began to speak. You Israelites and others who fear God, listen. The God of these people, Israel, chose our ancestors and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. For about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. After he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance for about 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. When he had removed him, he made David their king. In his testimony about him, he said, I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart, who will carry out all my wishes. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a savior. Jesus, as he promised, before his coming, John had already proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he, no, but one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals of his feet. Brothers, you descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God, to us the message of this salvation has been sent. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be a 
in your heart and on your lips, you may faithfully proclaim the gospel of Christ in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a great joy to be here to celebrate this patronal festival. I'm grateful to Father Christopher for inviting me. When I've been on previous patronal festivals, uh, there has been a great gathering of people, and usually the sun has shone like today, and we have had then a parish lunch in the gardens outside the church. As well as the challenges of the lockdown, I realise that there have been additional challenges here at St John's because the parish is in vacancy. I express my heartfelt thanks to the church wardens, Sonia and Sandy, and the parish officers, to Father Christopher and the ministry team, Margaret, the assistant priest, Rita, Alice and all who have worked together through the vacancy with such a good spirit of common purpose to sustain parish life so well. And I look forward to playing my part in appointing a new team rector. Today is the second time since the lockdown that I have led worship in one of our parish churches. The first was a fortnight ago when I was at Croydon Minster to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the rebuilding of the church after a fire in the 1860s. And thinking about it, as the cathedral is also a parish church as well as being our mother church, that makes three churches, as I recorded therefore, Pentecost. There is a very pleasing coincidence today, which is perhaps a sign that God has a sense of humour. 
One of my first acts as diocesan bishop nine years ago was to, dis was to convey minster status on Croydon Parish Church. For the preceding thousand years, it was, as it remains to this day, the ancient parish church of Croydon, dedicated, like this church, to St John the Baptist. Like today, we celebrated the Eucharist behind locked doors with our congregation. We rejoice that next Sunday is the first day when public worship will be able to resume in our churches. There will be limits on numbers, much will be different about how we worship together, many churches will not open right away, but it is at least a start, something new is stirring. We are opening up our buildings again, slowly and cautiously, not just to clergy and wardens, but to the parish as a whole. We are the Church of England, not a club with members, but the church for everyone, letting people into the wonderful buildings of which we are custodians, with which we have been entrusted, is an important part of living out our vocation. It is good that this is going to happen again, and I commend the 5,000 parish churches that have broadcast online worship during the pandemic, including this one. It is doubly good to have been so deeply immersed in St John the Baptist this last fortnight. John is the forerunner. There is in worldly terms something almost tragic about John. His greatest moment is one of pointing to someone else. He must increase and I must decrease, he says of Jesus in the Gospel of St John. John does not live to see the prophecies fulfilled, and Jesus even pays of him that strange backhanded compliment. No one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist's great work is to prepare the way. So where better to spend the month before the reopening of our churches for public worship than in two churches dedicated to the one whose vocation was to prepare the way of the Lord and to point people not to himself but to Christ. This is the highest calling. There is something deeply of God in John's faithful witness, his determination to say again and again, do not look at me, look at him. For what is it that we notice about God, the Holy Trinity, as we read carefully our scriptures, where of course the Trinity is not named as such and yet is present throughout. Time and again, Father, Son and Holy Spirit point away from themselves and to the others. This is my Son, listen to him, says the Father on the Mount of Transfiguration. The writer to the letter of the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about Jesus. In his farewell discourses, Jesus tells the disciples, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Pointing away from oneself is then a characteristic of God, the Son pointing to God the Father, as well as of John the Baptist, pointing to Christ. And it should be so of us. We do well if we are always more willing to point to Jesus than to ourselves, as worthy of respect, as source of wisdom and hope, as our very life itself. We do well when we direct our concern and care to others beside ourselves. An old bishop once gave a wonderful illustration which I have never forgotten. He said, think of a bird in a tree. If I'm pointing to that bird and you continue to look at me, I have completely failed in my task. But if you turn and look at that bird, then I will have done what I was trying to do, point beyond myself.
These are good thoughts to think as we make ready to open our doors once again for public worship. So I rejoice to have focused my thoughts on St John the Baptist twice in two weeks. I promise you they've been two entirely different sermons. <laughs> this may have been pure coincidence, but then again, there is much in a name. Names matter. And this too is a theme of John the Baptist and of our Gospel today from St Luke. First, the strange way he receives his name. Zechariah meets an angel of God in the Holy of Holies who tells him he and his wife Elizabeth will have a child in their old age and shall call him John and he will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, going before God with the spirit and power of Elijah. Zechariah does not believe the angel, and the angel strikes him mute. When the boy is indeed born, as we read in our Gospel, Elizabeth and Zechariah are faithful to the commandments of God. And though it defies convention, they name the boy as they have been told. And through his obedience, through faithful listening, Zechariah receives his voice once again, once he has written down, his name is John. So first of all, John's name comes to him from God, not descending by convention from his family, but straight from the heart of the Holy Trinity, by and in whom he is fully known, in whose book, as the psalmist says, are written all of the days formed for him when none of them yet existed. So it is for each of us too. His name is John. John's name comes from God. His life, his very nature, known in the heart of God for all time, was given to him by God. And John's name comes with a calling. Who he is, his being, has consequences if he lives aright in what he does in that light. His name is John, John the Baptizer. And so what of that other part of John's name? For this great building is not dedicated, as Croydon Minster is not dedicated, to St John the Evangelist, nor to St John Chrysostom, great and worthy as those saints are. This is the church of St John the Baptizer. The Greek is ambiguous. It could be, as we often say, John the Baptist, but it could also be John the Baptizer. It might be a name or a title, but it might be a job description. Many of us inherit names of this sort. The original John Baker was simply John whose calling was to make bread for the village. Jesus is the living bread, yes indeed, and tellingly today Jesus, who himself was baptised in the flowing waters of the River Jordan, as it happened by John, set the pattern for all of us who dare to call ourselves Christian. For the transmission of our faith is not by birth, as it is for our Jewish brothers and sisters, and indeed, as it was for our Lord himself, know we become Christian through the flowing waters of baptism. And that is the hallmark of all discipleship. If we aspire then to live that life of John the Baptist, which is a reflection of the true inner life of God the Holy Trinity, that life of pointing away from ourselves, the life of love in Christ, then we will discover who God made us to be. As John the Baptist was faithful through thick and thin to that light for which God had made him and to which God called him, may we too, my friends, hear God calling us by name, and as we hear his voice, may we become truly ourselves. We stand to affirm our faith. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us now pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the example of St. John the Baptist. We give you thanks for his example of repentance, and we ask for the gift of repentance, that we might turn away from all sins that separate us from you and from our neighbour, and from the person you would have each of us be. We repent of the sin of racism, we repent of seeing ourselves as more important than our neighbour. We repent of pointing to ourselves and not to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this, your church, of St John Baptist. We pray for our church wardens, Sonia and Sandy, for the Reverend Margaret, Alice, our reader, and all who minister here. We pray for Father Stuart, nearing the end of his break, and we pray that he might return refresh. We pray for all at St Barnabas. We pray for Father Nick and for all our brothers and sisters at St Mark's and St Luke's churches. We pray for our Archdeacon, Father Alistair, for our bishops Christopher and Carraway and our Archbishop Justin. Give them sustenance at this difficult time, sustain them in their work, and bring them safely through as they continue to guide our church and minister to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we are beginning to spend more time out of our homes, we pray for those who do not have a place to lay their head. We pray for the homeless. We pray for all refugees fleeing their home. We pray that they might receive the help, care and love that they deserve. And that we might do all in our power to assist them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world praying particularly for our persecuted brothers and sisters and for the church in Zimbabwe, praying for the Bishop of Manikaland, for Father Fritz, the Dean of Bulawayo, and Bishop Cleopas of Matabeleland, praying that as they go through a harder lockdown than ours and the lack of food and ready money with which to buy it, they might be strengthened in your spirit to continue to proclaim your word. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are sick. We pray for Raymond, Sheila, Ellie, Martin, Melissa, Veronica, Maylie, Ian, Josephine, Josie, Father Ian at St Lawrence's, Mel, Damian, Stephen, Josephine, Mother Sheridan, Rita and Gillian. Lord, may you be with them in their suffering. May you enfold them with your love and restore them to fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, for those who have died alone with no one to pray with or for them, for all of those who have died in our parish, unbeknownst to us. We pray for David King, and we keep a moment to recall all of those who remain on our hearts, but whom we see no longer. And among them, Julie Carmel, priest. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we join our own weak prayers with those of Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, St John Baptist, St Mark, St Luke, St Barnabas, and all the saints. As we say, merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The God of Israel has come to his people to set them free and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And if we are with others at this time, let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of our Blessed Lady, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. Barnabas, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all our Sin of the world, 
Happy are those who are called to his supper. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, whose prophet John the Baptist proclaimed your Son as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant that we who in this sacrament have known your forgiveness and your life-giving love may ever tell of your mercy and your peace, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. 
just a word before blessing to thank you, Bishop, for coming. It's a great honour to have you with us, and particularly at the moment uh, when we're obviously not generally holding public worship, and we very much look forward, as you've already said, to welcoming people back when we're able. I should just add to what you said in your sermon. I'm afraid here that's not going to be next Sunday, but we'll let people know as soon as, as we can. Uh, also, just to say, please join our St John's at four later. There's a special with Ramon for St John Baptist Day, which is a Songs of Praise style service. So we're looking forward to hearing all of the hymns and songs that people have suggested for this afternoon. And now there's a special acclamation, which if you're following in the PDF order of service that you have at home, you can join in with, but otherwise then do in spirit. And just before that, uh, can I just thank you, Father Christopher, thank the Wondons, Sonia and Sandy, and thank everyone for gathering together for this, our patronal celebration. Uh, the church is really rather good at doing things virtually because prayer can happen at a great distance. And I think we have deepened our life together as praying communities. I am so glad that in this parish, as in so many parishes throughout the diocese, there has been a real attempt to show care and love to the whole parish communion, community during these rather strange weeks. And so I am very grateful for the pastoral care that has been extended. And I hope that those who are tuning in from this parish, or perhaps from farther afield, will have found this an uplifting act of worship and help us to long for that day when we can once again celebrate together in one place under one roof and um, have one of those famous parish lunches outside. Thank you. The Father's voice bears witness to the Son. The Son bows his head beneath the Baptist's hand. The Spirit as a dove descends from the heavens. Submitting to John's baptism, Christ delivers us from bondage. God and the Holy Trinity has revealed himself to us. God give you grace to follow St John the Baptist and all the saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love your families and those who uphold you, and the whole diocesan family, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.